for you all. Yeah. Originally from India. Okay, very cool. Yeah. My uh, my wife's mother was a Welsh missionary. Okay. Who travelled to India in the 1920s. Okay. And uh, and a whole bunch of this tribe I can't remember what they're called. And then later immigrated to England, and there's still like churches that kind of honour uh, my wife's grandmother when she went to India. Okay. And, uh, there's a whole bunch of them who live in Wales now and, and Blackpool. Yeah. So Indian Christians. Sure, sure. And you are a Christian yourself? Well, according to you, no. But um, so I'm a, I call myself a Nazarene. So you know, Paul was accused of being a leader of the sect of Nazarenes, and I use that term not because I don't like the name Christian, but it comes with a lot of baggage. What's and, that? Uh, so, so in using technical term, I'm like a, a kind of a messianic Unitarian. Like you would you would view me as. So I don't believe. Hey, hey man. how are you doing, buddy? Okay. Good, good yeah, good to see you. Yeah, yeah. Good to see you. Hey, good man. You well? I'm well. Very good. Very good. <laughs> Yeah. So, so um, you are an. Uh, yeah. So I don't. I, I believe that um, Yeshua is the promised anointed one of Jehovah, and um, you know that the Hebrew scriptures speak of a prophet like Moses that God Almighty was going to send to the Israelites, who would be filled with the Word of God and who would only speak what God told him. That one would rise up from the root of Jesse. So that promise from Samuel to David that a root and descendant of, of Jesse, sorry, of King David would be called the Son of God, would be given an eternal kingdom. And, and, and we see this we see this theme kind of repeated in Jeremiah yep. and in Isaiah. Yep. And it says that this root of this root of Jesse, the, the branch from David, will be filled with the seven spirits of Jehovah, the seven spirits of God Almighty. Yep. No, I've not seen that. Um, and that as per Psalm 2, that God would raise up an anointed one who would rule up along his side, who would be decreed would be called the Son of God. And so yeah, there, there are, you know, one who would be the cornerstone of the new temple, so a spiritual temple, one who would, who would rebuild the temple of Jehovah, basically, because the temple of Judaism has so corrupted the message of Moses, the law, the prophets, that actually they created a counterfeit, illegitimate religion. You know, as Jesus said to them in John 10, you know, you're no better than sons of the devil. You know, your father was alive from the beginning. All you do is teach deceit and lies. You, you turn the, the law into a heavy burden. And I have come to set the people free from your fake religion, essentially. And, um, you know, when I look at the scriptures, and I look at the Hebrew scriptures in particular, looking for, looking to ask the question, who is Jesus? My start, I limit myself to, well, I believe Jesus taught his disciples after their resurrection. So if you recall in Luke 20, there are two occasions where Jesus revealed to his disciples everything that was written about him in the law of Moses, the prophets of the Psalms. And he them from the scriptures about him. He opened their minds so they could understand what and, and I believe we have of which specific passages in the Hebrew Bible Jesus taught them to speak. Suffering servant who would die. Examples where Paul talked about him going to the Hebrew Scriptures, telling the Jews who Jesus was from these old passages. And what I find is that talk about show where Jesus is in the Hebrew Bible. using passages that are never Oh, 
wants to, you know, bring destruction, destroy. And I believe infiltrated the message and were well intentioned. But clearly there was a bit of a disconnect because Just a martyr actually someone if someone even dare. Joshua, can I can I please yeah. interrupt you there? Yeah. So I mean just to limit so yeah. so shall we say I'd like so you are denying the deity of Jesus based on some reason you have in your mind. You are you are trying from what I can see, you're trying to both use scriptures, Hebrew scriptures, and uh, supposed Christian writers. No, I'm not using any Christian writers. Only, okay. only, only so Christian. Justin Martyr and so on. Maybe we'll keep aside for a moment. Yeah. Let's try and focus. Limit. Just be. Oh, we can have a long conversation yeah, later. No problem. But so are you? So in regards to deity of Jesus, yeah. what is your claim? Did, when did you, when do you think according to, according to your yeah. theology? When do you think Jesus, did Jesus come into existence at some stage? Yes, in the womb of Mary. In the womb of Mary. Only in the womb of Mary. Prior to the... At not, all? Not in a physical, literal sense. So he existed in the... God Almighty's plan that he would send, he would raise up a prophet like Moses, who would be declared to be his son. He would appoint his high priest, who would place at his right hand, who, who would be found worthy, if successful, to basically rule God's kingdom on earth. Role that the first Adam failed to do. Sure. I mean, role and so on, let's come to later. I, I'd, ri I'd really like to focus on, for firstly, you know, because in, in terms of data, I'd really like to narrow... ...rightly pointing out to... Oops, sorry. Oops. Ah. Oh. Is that whose is that? Yours? Apologies. Okay, okay. Um, so, firstly, clearly, so you're saying he is not eternal in existence. Uh, he came into being at the time of his birth, physical birth, uh, womb of Mary. Okay. So, clearly, that will also imply that even in, yeah, he can't be equal to Yehovah. Both, yeah, the first point. By the second, and clearly, of course, you contradict Christian theology there. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm aware of that. <laughs> you contradict even Paul there. No, I disagree. I don't. I don't believe I contradict any any of the apostles or Jesus. I don't believe that contradicts it. If you can show me where it does, I'll be grateful to. Or we can discuss why you think I contradict. Paul. Sure. So, cool. So maybe we'll just stick to the time at which Jesus came into being ever. In any form, any shape or form. Uh, but b before we get on to that, let's uh, just to just by way of clarification, because you also you said uh, he didn't exist physically prior to that. I don't think he existed physically prior to that. Also, um, because I believe God eternally was a spirit. Um, even to, uh, so, Jesus even before he took up human form would have been a spirit in regards to. So in his I'm, essential nature, but what do you, I, I what understand I mean what you're saying. I don't believe Jesus existed, existed in any entity prior to coming to earth. Only in the mind of God, it maybe. In Philippians 2. Yeah, yeah, that's what you, okay, cool. Um, so I see, I, I saw what you're saying, but just to clarify. Yeah, okay, um, okay, my challenge clearly is I'm going to contra I'm, I contradict that. Um, I think there are multiple ways to approach uh, this topic. You can use predictions made in Hebrew scriptures um, about the Messiah. Absolutely. You can use a description of the nature of God in the Hebrew scriptures also in relation to this. In, uh, you can use New Testament. Um, uh, like you rightly said, Jesus' own view of himself and the Apostle's view on Jesus and so on too. See if you are right or if the traditional orthodox Christian view is right. Um, and so, um, okay, 
So where do we begin? Like, like, I mean, a number of places we can go to. I mean, before, 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 you, before, you get the role before, that first, before, the first chess piece. No, it, I, it doesn't have to be like that. I, I'd like it to be a conversation because yes, yes, I can, I can see that you listen and yeah. you let me speak and I can let you speak and so on. So uh, before I, uh, you know, um, make some specific points, can I please ask you, do you have any specific reason to claim that Jesus could not have existed? i.e. a positive assertion of his non-existence prior to the point of him enter him being in the womb of Mary. Is there any con any verse that you can quote to suggest yeah, that so he could not have existed? So my initial answer stepping back is clearly with God all things are possible. Yeah. However, I'm constrained by what I believe the Hebrew Scriptures and the New Testament teach. So my first passage I would go to is Psalm 2. Yeah, that talks about the promised anointed one of Jehovah, and in verse 2, 7, the anointed one is speaking, he says, I will tell of the decree. So the person speaking already exists. Yeah? And I'll, I'll just read it from, um, uh, from Psalm 2, 7, just uh, in order to, uh, and it's quoted in Hebrews 1 as well. Um, I've got it there, yeah. So, so basically, uh, Hebrews 2, 7, it says, Then um, I will tell of the decree. So this is the anointed one of Psalm 2, uh, 2 speaking. Jehovah said to me, You are my son. Today I have become your son. Some translations, it will say today. Interestingly, if you go to Hebrews 1, um, you have two versions. What's that? I'll hold your back. No, it's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. In, in Hebrews 1, you have two versions of Psalm 2.7. You've got the version from the Dead Sea Scrolls and the version from the Alex X. So there he has, for which of the angels did he ever say, You are my son, today I have forgotten you. Father, and he will be my son. So the first reason why I believe Jesus does not exist the eternal generation of the Son is that according to the declaration of Jehovah and Jesus himself, is that at a specific point in time, Someone who already exists says that the Father said to me, Today I will become your Father, yeah, and today you will be my son. Now in Romans 1, we have an animatic statement by Paul declaring that at the resurrection Jesus was declared to be the Son of God. Now I'm conscious that the baptism of Jesus, clearly the Father spoke from heaven and also called Jesus a son. So there's a bit of blurring. But, so my first reason is that, the second one, is I think the title Father, why we call God Almighty Father, originates initially when Jehovah said to Moses in Deuteronomy 30 31, when he was giving him instructions for living, he said, Look, teach the Israelites to call me Father. This is the title that I've chosen in order to reveal myself to them. I called Israel my firstborn son, and, and I'll be a father to them, and they will be my children. So, this is the language of relationship I want to share with them. And you know, from that time, Moses, David, um, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Micah, they call Jehovah Father in prayer, petition, praise, etc. And so when Jesus called the Father of God Almighty Father, I believe that was a common term, at least justified in Hebrew Scriptures, even if the Israelites had lost that closeness with the Father. And so thereby, I don't believe that the term that is often linked between Father is called the Father because Jesus is the Son. I believe the Father is called the Father because that's what he instructed Moses to tell the Israelites, you will call me Father because I've declared you my firstborn son. And Jesus, as a descendant of David and all this stuff, kind of fits within that on earth. But clearly he is a distinguished son of God, like Adam is, because in Luke chapter 1, Adam is also Jesus, son of David, son of Adam, son of God. And Jesus is a unique son of God in that as Adam was created completely from God, as was Jesus. Cool. Maybe we'll stick with the first one. Please keep into the first one first. So your point with the first one is clearly Jesus was begotten at the point at some point, a bit of haziness, you say. I don't remember the exact term you use. A bit of when precisely, but you know, either baptism or 
or the resurrection. Says that the anointed one will be declared to be the Son of God at a particular point of time. I mean, that, that's what the text says. So I don't believe it existed eternally. So in other words, your your point is clearly if he was begotten at that time. My problem is this. Like you, I mean, so in other words, in your mind, when, a, so in your mind, I think mentioned that, uh, alluded to that a little bit, but just uh, by way of clarification. So, I'd be accurate, that I'd be accurate if I told you that in your mind, that begetting happened in earth. When he was declared to be the son of God, yeah. I, I don't, I don't view that word begetting as when he was created. Which is the earliest version of that psalm, which is quoted in Psalm two, it doesn't talk about Jesus being begetten, begotten. It just talks about the Father declaring the anointed one will be called His Son. It doesn't actually talk about His physical creation. So let me, let me, let me, let me get. I, I, I'm a bit confused right now because I think you, you, because. From what I understood you, uh, from, I understood from you early on, mm. your entire point revolved around the idea. Of no. Where your point is, yes no. if you, uh, let me finish and then you clarify. From what I understood, your point was well, if this is the time he was begotten, mm. clearly he couldn't have existed prior to this. That's your point. From what I understood, long long well, story yes. short. I'll just quick point of clarification. There is a. There is a complexity because in Hebrews there are there are two renditions of Psalm 27. One where it talks about today I have begotten you, where we're drawn into a potential creation of Jesus. Whereas we talked about yeah, and, and, where, and whereas in the Dead Sea Scrolls, but also in Hebrews one, it just talks about the Father declaring declaring it will be the but, Son. But you are aware the the reason I said I'm a bit confused yeah, yeah. is because we are aware yeah. if you use the uh, use the um, the variant or your interpretation which well, is declared it says, it says in Hebrews Hebrews 1 it says it's got the same version in Hebrews sure so but let me let me make a yeah. point and if you, you if you stress on the if you if your point is it's not begotten in one particular version it's rather being declared then you won't have a point at all there you appreciate that because your entire point revolves around a claim as to when he was begotten and for that point to be made it needs to be begotten do you appreciate that? Let's go down the begotten path. But do you appreciate that? If it was, in other words, you, you, you I, I don't even know why you're, sir, you're, why you're, why you are mentioning the idea of the declare. Because if you mention that idea of declare, you haven't got a point. No, I do because because what it says is, today I have become your father. The Christian argument is Jesus is the eternally begotten Son. If in Scripture we have more than one witness, and we do, we have three witnesses where it says, today I have become your father, that means, first of all, Jesus is in existence when the declaration is made, and secondly, the declaration is made at a point in time that exists. It can't have been something that happened eternally. It can't be something that, that, that happened outside of time, because the scriptures tell us it occurred within time. Today I have become your father, it means that event occurred at some point within created time. You see? That, 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 that's my that's my argument, brother. Josh, I heard what your argument is, okay, okay, okay. and I'm 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 unsure. Yeah. Let, let's put it this way: whether it's declared, uh, Josh. Me. Yeah. No, that's fine. Yeah. Josh. Yeah. Sticking to your first point, yeah. ignoring the minor point that you make, trying to make that it's declared. Well, it's a very minor oh, point. Don't mind me. I laugh sometimes. It's not meant to be geography. Oh, uh, it's not meant to be I'm not, insulting. I'm, 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 I'm not. I'm not. I'm not insulted. Oh, yeah, I'm not please. insulted. I, I do sometimes laugh. It's not meant to be an insult. It's just a uh, one of my character traits. As I'm thinking when I giggle, so it's not meant to be an insult. So forgive me. Well, uh, Josh, yeah. don't worry. I, I don't. I don't get insulted. Yeah. But I, I try to gauge if a person is listening. Yeah. And um, and uh, when he is supposed to evaluate the uh, other side of the story properly, yeah. if he is already thinking about what he wants to think, then oh, it's no, a bit. No, no, I want yeah. to listen. I want sure, to listen. sure, yeah. cool. That's the only concern. Uh, apart from that, I don't, I don't have any concern with you laughing or whatever. My point simply is, yeah. your first point is about is essentially, this is when he became the son. Whether it's begotten, whether it's declared, or whatever, yeah. none of those details matter. Your ultimate point. <laughs> yeah, 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 praise the Lord. How are you doing? Okay, praise the Lord. 
it ultimately a point is this is the time he became the son in whichever word phrase you want to use whichever word form you want to use this is the point he became the son and therefore he couldn't have existed prior to this is your point and linked to that that the father is called the father not because he that's your second point son. yeah that's your second point no 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 that's a very distinct second point okay. uh, they may have a I combined think. effect also they may have a combined effect also but yeah. that needs to be separately okay. established okay. your first point as far as i can see is well if he is 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 son right now mm -hmm. then he couldn't have been in existence prior to this and that's the substance of your first point and there my problem is this you very well pointed out that clearly the declaring of the son happened during baptism during resurrection so clearly if you take these two examples jesus clearly existed even before these two declarations clearly so your claim that when the declaration happened is when he comes into existence no, he couldn't know let me finish not into existence. let me finish not into existence. let me finish josh you need to let me finish i i didn't interrupt you you need to let me finish if your logical claim is that the if there is a point in time at which the bible says this is when he is proclaimed or declared or begotten to be the son he could not have been in existence prior to that if that is the logical claim made then you need to correct me because that's what i've heard from you so far but let me finish because i need to i think this is what you said you may refine it further but you need to do that now but so far what you've said is this is the point in time when he is the son therefore prior to that he could not have existed because if this is when he is the son prior to this he could, he could not be, could not have existed if that is the claim you are making simply wrong even quoting the three examples you quoted you know by all counts it's wrong number 1 he was declared during baptism according to your logic he could not have existed prior to the baptism in other words he could not could not have been 30 years old by the time of baptism logically flawed he was declared at resurrection which is around 33 years which means for three more years he could not have existed and rightly you pointed out to psalm 2 very unfortunate that you misinterpreted psalm 2 psalm 2 doesn't say by the way will psalm 2 says today i have in in the alex x but there is more than one version no 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 let me let me finish, no, let me finish. psalm 2 if you read carefully why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the lord and against his anointed it already implies the anointed was in existence you can't rebel against a person who did not exist let me finish let me finish <laughs> i need to finish you can i i I want to have a certain flow Josh. If you interrupt if you interrupt you know I may I may be tempted to accommodate your inter, uh, the point you're making during your interruption also in my rebuttal which I don't want to make because then it'll be a bit uh, so so far, uh, the word prophecy used only now I'm going to ignore that for a moment. Please use that later. I'm not going to address that for a moment. If you read this carefully it clearly says against the Lord uh, what are they do, the why what are the nations doing? they are raging plotting a vain thing um they are setting themselves and taking counsel together against two entities according to this passage one the lord i.e. one yahweh yehova and another his messiah anointed saying let us break their bonds in pieces let us break whose bonds they are bonds so they are already in existence number 1 number 2 it is not just them who are in existence it is even the fact that these nations are considering the bonds which were placed on them to be bonds by both yehova and the messiah someone who did not exist could not have placed a bond oops ah uh, ah uh, ah uh. Nathan <laughs> we have a problem there 
I don't have a problem. Oh, 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 oh. What's going on? What do you, I don't know who this is. Oops. Maybe, huh? Should we, should we? JC, what's going on? Who, who is fighting? Who is fighting you? Oh, what's that? Nathan, I think some, some people are fighting. Okay, so J Josh. talking through Psalm 2. Yes, Psalm 2. So, Psalm 2 claims that uh, two entities existed already, yep. the Lord and His Messiah. Psalm 2 claims that it is not just the fact that those two, two entities existed, it's also the fact that even their bonds were felt felt by these nations, their cords, their cords, felt, felt by, felt by um, these nations and they were enraged and then it goes on to say, he who sits in the heavens shall laugh, the Lord shall hold them in derision, then he shall speak to them in his wrath um, and distress them in his deep displeasure, yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion, I will declare the decree the Lord has said to me, there's already someone speaking there. The Lord has said to me, you are my son. Today, the today in this text has to be interpreted as that day in which the text is expressed unless you can clearly establish the motivation otherwise. Today, I have begotten you ask of me and i will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession you shall break them you shall so some things are referred to in the future which is you shall break them and you shall dash them and so on but today i ask i i declare that you are my son today i am begetting you and today I'm asking you to ask me of the nations and the ends for your possession. And in the future, you shall break and whatever. Now, therefore, be wise, O kings. The kings being referred to here are the kings of that time. Now, therefore, be wise, O kings. Be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. So it clearly says, well, there are two entities clearly earlier they had, a con they had opposition to. In regards to Yahweh, it says, serve him with fear. And then it moves on to say, and rejoice with trembling. And then it moves on to say, kiss the son, lest he be angry. And you perish in the way. When his wrath is kindled by, but a little, blessed are all those who put their trust in him. And so the point is, Psalm 2, very clear. The Messiah was already in existence. Nations already felt the opposition. The impact of the Messiah, of his bonds, what they perceived as their bonds, uh, Yehovah and the Messiah's bonds. And um, they were given a particular recommendation, which is to serve Yehovah, but kiss the Messiah, both. So the Messiah was already in existence. In other words, clearly, your early so I'm contradicting two important things number one number one I'm the number one claim is if you say anytime there is a declaration if that have existed before that, that times over it was wrong um, of the baptism being so he, could, he couldn't have existed any time prior to that. But if it was true at the time of the uh, baptism, and therefore Psalm 2 couldn't be true. But multiple times over, that's wrong. Point number one. Point number two is, um, according to Psalm 2, the Messiah was already in existence. So th those are two points. So you can't claim that he came into existence only during his earth. There's been a bit of miscommunication, and so I'll just try and clarify that now before. 
to where Peter and James give us the fulfillment of this. The first thing that I'd say, the, the title, the, the, the title of when Jesus in Psalm 2, it clearly speaks about Jehovah. At a point of time, the anointed one who was Yeah, from, and so that's why Jesus can be born as the anointed one and then at a point in his earthly ministry he be declared the son that's my first point so I hope that clarifies that secondly I believe many prophecies are seeing events that will happen in the future not now but for example Daniel 7 where Daniel says look I saw one like a son of man brought before the ancient of days you know and he was given the kingdom and power and authority I believe that was a future event that we see fulfilled in Revelation chapter 5 where one like a son of man was brought before he who sits on the throne like a lamb that was slain etc so it's an event that's going to happen in the future a bit like Abraham looked forward to the city that was promised to him by God I believe that in the spirit he saw that King David likewise, you know, I believe, you know, Psalm 22 that he wrote in Psalm 18, I believe that he saw Jesus die in the spirit, I believe that he saw Jesus be raised from the dead, and that's why he was able to write these psalms. So I see Psalm 2 as a, as a, as a future promise. And the reason why I say that is if we go to Acts chapter 4, yeah, if we go to Acts chapter 4, we can actually see the fulfillment of Psalm 2. And Peter and James have just been arrested. Uh, so, so Acts 4, and we'll just go from um, verse 23. And there's quite a lot of important themes here, and we'll try and narrow it just to the sun bit, but I'm happy to divert as you would like. But, um, so Peter and James, basically, they get released from the elders, and they go back to the other disciples. And they tell them what happens, and it says that when they heard this, so these are the disciples of Jesus and those who came to faith at Pentecost, they lifted their voices with one mind to God and said, Master, you are the one who made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all the things in them. The one who said by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of our father, David, your servant, why do the nations raise and the peoples conspire in vain? The kings of the earth stood opposed and the rulers assembled together at the same place against, I'll say, Jehovah and against his anointed one. So we can see the fulfillment. They believe what they've just seen is the fulfillment of Psalm 2. And if we go on, they actually explain it. They say, for in truth, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, together with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel, are gathered together in this city against your holy servant, Jesus, whom you anointed. You know, we know that the title holy servant is, you know, in Isaiah 42, um, is a common title for the anointed one who is appointed by God. It says, and now, Lord, ah, yeah, so yeah, so they gathered against your holy servant Jesus, against whom you anointed to do all your hand and plan to take predestined to take place. So this is the future plan of God. And now, Lord, concern yourself with their threats and grant us to beat with boldness as you extend your hand to heal. And signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant Jesus. And basically, then it goes on, they're filled with the Holy Spirit. And so, we see here, going back to that when we first had that discussion about what passages in the Hebrew Bible are applied to Jesus and how we apply to them, that this is a great example of, of, of Peter explaining to us the fulfillment of Psalm 2 7. And so, that's why I believe that. Um, because clearly we know this is that Psalm 2 1 there. And that and then if we go to Romans 1, for example, which is which is linked to this this point here. When it says Paul, a slave of the anointed one Jesus, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he proclaimed previously through his prophets and the Holy Scripture. So again he's talking about events that can happen in the future concerning his son, who was born a descendant of David according to the flesh. So that goes back to my point why I believe that's when he came into existence. He was declared son of God in power according to the spirit of holiness, or the Holy Spirit, by the resurrection of the dead. You see, so um, that, that's why, and maybe the confusion, um, yeah, so that, that's why I believe Jesus doesn't exist eternally as the Son, but rather he came into existence at a point of time, and then at a point during his earthly ministry, he was declared to be the Son of God. So, you have, I mean, a couple of things have happened in your latest rebuttal. Okay. 
<laughs> one one of the things is you are now implying that the declaration could happen after the person is already in existence. Well, remember I said that I wasn't... Remember there are two verses. There's one about I have begotten you, which people think about the physical creation of Jesus. But the second title, which is today I become your father, is a declaration of God to the anointed one who already existed. Uh, you, you shouldn't... In Interrupt, Josh. You shouldn't interrupt. No, that's what this says. You finished your point. Okay. I'm, I'm, you need to hear out. Hear out. You implied in your latest response, Josh, that clearly the declaration, whether begotten or declaration, the claim or the assertion that he was the son could happen when the entity when jesus was already in existence absolutely yeah in other words you have so gone against the very the important claim you made initially because no let me let me finish let me finish you have gone against the very important very first claim you made because your your very first claim is oh because the declaration happened right now he couldn't have existed prior to this but now if you're going to say, no, he could exist prior to this, and the declaration could happen any time during his existence, then clearly that completely nullifies your previous point that this declaration means he could not have existed before. So in other, in other words, we can argue all day long, we can argue all day long what the specific uh, passage, Psalm 2 or Romans or, um, or the uh, baptism passage, what the declarations were about we can argue all day long but the point simply is you've already given way you've already agreed with me that your first point is wrong it's it's zilch it's zero because he could have already existed so you can't use the declaration to decide or to imply anything about his existence prior hand you can't do anything you see my point i, I disagree because in hebrews it talks about, if you go to Hebrews chapter 1 verse 5, it says these two statements, and this is where you and I are slightly getting cross-wires. It says, for which to the angels did he, Jehovah, ever say, you are my son, today I have begotten you. So that's a discussion about the creation of Jesus, i.e. did he exist, was he begotten, well, however you would believe it, at, at, whether from a substance or from eternally, eternally generated. Or that could be talking about, did he come into existence in the birth of Mary? The second statement is, and again, I will be his father and he will be my son. That is not a statement of creation. That is a statement of a declaration. And that's what I'm focusing on here. Let me, let me, let, Josh, um, I, I, uh, nonsensical, nonsensical, thoroughly nonsensical. Because if you read the Hebrews, uh, the ch chapter one, I know, I know. If you read Hebrews chapter 1 in context, the entire intent for verses 5 and 6 is not about establishing when Jesus was came into existence, but rather how he was seen in relation to the Father. Whereas the angels were ministers, servants, he is the Son. That is the comparison made. If you, I, I don't know. quoting Psalm 2.7. That, that's taken from Psalm 2. Joshua, please. Hebrews. Okay. Let me, let, me, let me cut the chase, get to the point straight, answer a very simple point that I'm going to make. Tell me if you agree with it or not. When a declaration is made that you are my son, whether it's a declaration or whether the statement or the uh, assertion is expressed as a declaration without using the word begotten or without using the word declaration but implying begetting regardless of the usage either begotten or declaration if this is the time when a person is asserted to be the son my simple question is could that person have existed prior to that or not what is your claim he could have which means which means with psalm 2 with hebrews with any of these claims verses that you are using none of them is going to help you in establishing that jesus could not have existed prior hand none of them would explain good thank you so in other words you need to so far you haven't made a point here point number one was invalid no 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 but you've not do you believe question to you in the eternal the, 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 do you believe that jesus existed eternally 
Um, I haven't yet oh, begun yeah, making yeah, my yeah, point. No, but sorry, but do you? Because you see the point. Joshua, yes, Joshua, so Joshua. Ask a yes or no, to that? no. Oh, you don't believe you you No, 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 no. I'm not going to engage in that kind of conversation. Okay. I allowed you to make your. I allowed you. I'm not carefully, Joshua. If we rewind, maybe 20 minutes ago, maybe 10 minutes before the argument. I've got, you know, what I've said makes sense. Jo Joshua, please. I'm going to. I ask you if you have positive evidence for the non-existence of prior to his uh, being born in this world. I asked you that. That was the large context. I was One second. No, 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 no. I don't know what you had to say. I, no, no. I'm now. I think you're a bit confusing right now. From what I understood, you were very clearly attempting to engage with the question I asked, and you said yes, you have positive evidence for the non-existence of Jesus prior to his incarnation. You said that was the case. You have evidence. And the first evidence you quoted was the fact that, in your view, there are a few declarations or claims of begetting of Jesus. And so your point was, well, if this is when he became the son, clearly he could not have existed beforehand. That was your positive evidence for his non-existence. But you now agree, regardless of whether there are 100 declarations as to when Jesus was the son, you agree that he could have existed, be, existed before that. In other words, you do not, your first point is invalid. Now we can move on to your second point. I don't know where we, uh, the generation, regeneration or generation of begetting, you know, like for like. So you, I, I, I don't know what your point in that regard was because you, you didn't articulate that to me. Maybe you had that in your mind, in the back of your mind while you're making first, first point. Of course, you made your second point also. I don't know if that's related to... Uh, the begetting you're talking about. So, what is now your point about what Sorry. I assert? Sorry. I have heard the term the eternal generation of the Son. So, most Trinitarians will profess that Jesus existed eternally. You see? So, you're right. My answer was addressing that specific nature, that doctrinal creed that Jesus existed as the Son eternally. And that's why I was bringing up these points. Why no, the, even in that relation, your first point is invalid. Because as you agreed, as you agreed, even when he was alive on earth, there were multiple times clearly separated by a period of time. No, because if you believe Jesus was always the Son, Psalm 2 7 proves that to be true because the anointed one is declared to be the Son at a specific point in time. So he cannot eternally be the Son. Okay, can I now respond? So, do you believe that Jesus was declared to be the Son at the baptism? At his baptism? Do you believe that Jesus was declared to be the Son at the point of resurrection? So no 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 no. I don't want the, I don't want your other statements of beliefs. If your latest from what I understand, your latest point is if he was declared once, he couldn't have been a son before. That's if you essentially. Well, clearly it's not obvious by by the two examples we are quoting, because. If he was already son at the time of baptism, saying that he was declared to be son at the time of resurrection is invalid. I can explain that when I get No, no, no. I don't need explanation. It's a simple logical flaw. No, it's not. But I'll tell you why when we speak. I don't know. What, what are you clarifying? I don't understand what you're clarifying now. You clearly appreciate, you clearly appreciate, using the examples you are quoting, that someone who is a son already can be declared to be a son again. I can explain when I get my turn. No, no, don't explain anything. Do we agree, using the two examples that you are quoting, a son can be re-declared to be son? And I can, it will make sense when I tell you I don't know, how what? I didn't, I didn't make any point. I, this is the only point I'm making. I didn't make any additional point. doesn't make sense. What's that? That, that he can be declared son twice. The reason he can be declared son twice is one, at his baptism he's being obedient as the son. Well, why he's declared to be the son of God as resurrection is that he is the firstborn of the new creation. I don't care, Josh. So I really don't care. Son in two occasions. I don't... No. I, I, but what are you trying to answer? You are answering a question which I never asked. My question I'm asking is very simple. You earlier said, at the time of declaration, it is. it should be obvious that he didn't exist before. You retracted that. Re Joshua, let me finish this. Initially, you, you, you asserted that 
if there is a declaration that someone is a son, he could not have existed beforehand. That was your assertion. I don't, I don't know why you are muddling up the water right now. That was your assertion. You retracted that as far as I can see. You agreed to, with me that even, there is, even if there is a declaration, he could have existed prior to prior hand. Now, your latest escape clause is that, your latest escape clause is that, if someone is declared to be a son at some stage, whether he existed or not prior to that, at least he wasn't a son prior to that. That's your latest claim. And my point is, even that can't be true, even according to the two examples you are quoting. Because by the two examples you are quoting, which is one declared to be the son at baptism, for whatever reason, I'm not asking what the reason is, and another time declared to be the son uh, at resurrection, for whatever reason, I don't care what the reason is, declared to be the son. If the fact that he wasn't a son, already, uh, if, if the fact that him being declared a son at resurrection means he wasn't a son earlier, then the declaration at the point of baptism is invalid. And which clearly you would either disagree with. No, don't no, not. This is this is a simple logical point that I am making. I am I am I am uh, Josh. You come across as a yeah yeah I know. You, I know I know. You come across you come across as a, as a person who listens clearly. I completely I'm, I don't have any problem with that. I have no problem with that. But you can't if you want. What I have said so far nullifies what you have said so far. It nullifies. If it hasn't, you need to clarify. Don't add any new point. Because you're muddling up water by just adding more and more points. Don't muddle up any... Focus only on... So, please, and let me finish with a, uh, with a question, two questions. Uh, as a way of summarizing what I have seen that we, have, we should be agreeing on already. Number one, being declared a son at any point does not mean someone wasn't in existence beforehand. The person could have been in existence. I hope we agree. Number two, being declared to be the son does not just mean he could, not, could have been in existence beforehand, but it could also mean he might have been declared to be son already. He might have been son for whatever reason already also in other words you quoting psalm 2 or, or hey, what you quoting are you fine are you okay yeah okay sure. you quoting psalm 2 oh okay disabled are you sure you're fine lady yeah, are you sure you're fine uh, i'm fine i came with my family i'm just looking so they can see me okay okay my sure sister, she's somewhere around there she's wearing black okay okay i want but for now you're fine, yeah? Fine. Okay, okay, sure. Yeah, God's blessings here. Um, um, and so, any number of... Um, any number of quotes you present about declarations of him being son has no effect, has no effect whether he existed or not prior hand and whether he was already son or not for whatever reason prior hand. No bearing. Because as you agreed, it could happen multiple times and it could happen even while he is already in existence. Now, please clarify, do you agree with that? Where, are, where am I missing you? So, in a box, that's why I am. Well, clearly we got to deal with what Scripture says. We have a promise in Psalm 2-7 that the anointed one will be declared the Son at a specific point in time. The reason why Jesus is called Son on two occasions, during his baptism, as obedience as a Son of God the Father, at his resurrection, because he is the firstborn, of the new creation. He's the firstborn of the dead. If, if you're firstborn, then you have a father. Do you know what I mean? And so therefore, Jesus will be declared the firstborn of the resurrection. So therefore, the father is the father of the new creation. You're giving me, I don't, I don't know, how, I, you're not contradicting the, the specific areas where I'd like agreement on. So, the thing is that uh, I admit that I, I was trying to answer a slightly more nuanced question. If you are asking me, not for us to discuss together about why I don't believe Jesus pre-existed or stop. I was answering why I don't believe he pre-existed as the Son eternally. But okay, it's, it's I didn't use the term. I know, I know. That was me. That, yeah. that, that was one me. second, one second. Maybe that's the lady. Is that your sister there? 
Is your sister there? My sister. Yeah, yeah. she was uh, feeling a bit uh, funny. Funny, yeah. So please. Don't mind her. Okay, she's okay. Sick. She followed us. She shouldn't come. We live very close. We told okay, her okay. we won't be long. Okay. She wants to come. Okay, okay, okay. All right, okay. As long as you're on top of things. Sure, sure. I just was. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Yeah. So, if I just say, Sorry, why, apologies. Yeah, why did Jesus not praise this full stop? I will talk about how the beginning of it again, Romans and Hebrews, how God. How the, the, so, nothing about the declaration? No, no, no. No, no, no. In no, regards to pre existence, no. Because I'll talk about how Jesus. How so, the, do we agree, Josh? Yeah. Your claim, your points using the declaration of the Son is irrelevant. Do we agree? To the pre existence of Jesus. If we're having just a discussion, yeah. Cool, that is the only discussion yeah, yeah, yeah. we were having. Yeah. Uh, so maybe maybe you assumed uh, what I didn't ask for I, or something. I, I, forgive me. <laughs> because I, I don't know if you want to... I mean, we've, we've done this one to death, but I don't know if you believe that Jesus existed eternally as the Son. Because when he turned into As the today, Son, I did not even focus okay, on. Okay, I apologize. That's a very different area. My question was simply... Okay, yeah. My question was simply... Existence. Do yes, you so believe in his Hebrews eternal one, existence? One, no, no, but one. do we agree? Your declaration is, is meaningless, irrelevant. Yeah. yeah, good, thank you. That's good, yeah, thank you. Okay, now, now yeah, please move on. Do not ever follow Allah. The points I was making earlier are very important. Please. Well, because he is a made up fantasy god. No, no, we need truth. How do you get faith? One second, Josh. Let me just give me, give me my card. Now, please, now start fresh. Please email. Please email. Don't follow Islam. You need to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't miss a precious one to follow what is worthless. Don't do it. Please don't do it. Well, I, I, this is my recommendation. Please. Sure, please, Josh. Yeah, so now you're going to start. Yeah, I'm still not focusing on the sun. That's fine. That's fine. So I'm, my focus is not, eternal that's existence. That's not, that's I'm going to ask yeah, again. So let me ask again. Yes. Or let me uh, uh, restate this just to make sure we are starting again on the same point. From what I understand, you assert that Jesus did not exist prior to his birth on this world. In this world, he did not exist. And you are going to present evidence, positive evidence. Positive evidence for the non-existence of Jesus prior to his birth. So the first one is that Jesus never said he pre-existed. Second one, Jesus never said what? Jesus never said he pre-existed. So that's evidence. No, no, never said is not positive evidence. I'm looking for positive evidence for non-existence. You're talking about a non. I'll just do maybe three points. So sure. Jesus declares that he is a man during his earthly ministry. Yeah. This is a phrase that is used 15 times of Jesus in the book of Luke and the book of Acts. Paul defines what a man is in Acts 17. It is someone of the nature of you and I. Yeah. Jesus never declares of any other nature than that of a human. Secondly, when Jesus is receives his honor in Revelation chapter 5 when he is found worthy to open the seal at the right hand of the Father he is not recognized or nor that does he return to any pre-existence state of glory or acknowledgement that he pre-existed in heaven beforehand he is the lamb that was slain the faithful servant the witness who was brought for the Father purchased through his blood yet in the sacrifice servants and priests to serve his God so second point is when Jesus returns to heaven he is not received as the pre-existent second member of a triune God. He is received as one like a son of man who is obedient to death on the cross, who is elevated to the right hand of God, and because of his obedience to the cross, he is purchased for God, you and I, to be his priests and to be members of the kingdom of his Father, who is the one true God. The third one is the opening of the book of Hebrews and the book of Romans, where the authors clearly tell us that, and in many places, that God spoke to us in the past through his prophets, and in these days he speaks to us through his son. There is no evidence that Jesus spoke at any stage in the Hebrew Bible, and I do not believe he is the angel of the Lord, which I can irrefutably demonstrate with, with no, I, will, I, can, I can prove that with, with no doubt, that Jesus the so-called angel of the Hebrew Bible. So that's why. So 
first? So just going in return order. No evidence of Jesus speaking in the Hebrew Scriptures. That's the first one in the Old Testament. Yeah. And none of his disciples said he did. Second one was when Jesus was received in heaven. There is no acknowledgement that he's returning to some pre-existent glory, assuming his position as the second person of the Triune Godhead. And, and the first one is that Jesus declares that he is a man. His disciples declare he is a man. And there is never any embarrassment, embellishment, excuse as to why they call him a man. Rather, they say he is the anointed one who fulfilled all these prophecies from the Hebrew Bible. One second, Joshua. I, I, I registered at my wife. Oh, hello, Sudi. Yeah. What's that? What in scripture? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, please, we're in the middle of something. I'll, I'll maybe uh, half an hour. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay, Sitma. Okay, we'll see you in a bit. Bye, bye, bye. Uh, Josh, I am, I, I, honestly speaking, Josh, I'm really honestly going to speak. I really think the level of scrutiny you've made, you said, you said your wife's uh, grandmom was a Christian missionary, um, and you have clearly got, taken a very different route so far. And from what I can see, from what I can see, the level to which you have scrutinized scriptures to come to your conclusion is very abysmal from what I can see. Yeah, and um, um, that's not to put you down because I'm, I'm pretty sure you're a very wonderful man. You think much better than me in all sorts of different areas or whatever else. But in this area, for whatever reason, uh, my evaluation is this and I honestly hope, hope that through God's grace that, that you would uh, rethink some of the things that you're making okay um, and become a proper Christian now the three points you're making for a moment for a moment of course you are you have for each of the three points you have a basic premise you, you have an assumption that Jesus didn't claim any other nature the first one Jesus claimed only uh, manhood only manhood nothing else and therefore he couldn't have pre-existed Secondly, you said Jesus, uh, even in the book of Revelation, when he was receiving, uh, when he was declared to be worthy of uh, opening the seal, in your view, uh, nothing else was claimed about his pre-existence, and that, um, that, and therefore, he couldn't have pre-existed. That's point number two. Uh, point number three is, um, in relation to um, prophets, spoken also, prophets of, in regards to yeah. Hebrew scriptures also and Jesus is not seen anywhere in yeah world. Hebrew scriptures also according to you the assumption is that none of the apostles or whoever uh, allude to his pre-existence in Hebrew scriptures and therefore he couldn't have pre-existed now the, you have three assumptions and three inferences from each of them you have inferences and the same inference that he couldn't have pre-existed couldn't have pre-existed couldn't have pre-existed couldn't he didn't difference didn't pre-exist yeah, yeah, yeah. which, which is much more which is much more forceful yeah. Yeah. no didn't is much more forceful yes. for which you need to keep more evidence now so far yeah. so far if you note carefully let us for a moment assume your premises were right your starting points were right which i don't think is the case yeah. at all they are completely <laughs> bonkers and it tells me that you haven't done your research properly. Well, but the, your position is completely bonkers. Fine, you can. So, uh, you need so to we establish. Can be together. We can. You be can have a listen to your Absolutely. Your Ultimately, let the word of the Lord Amen. reign supreme. Amen. Let the word of the Lord be Amen. proven to be pr proven to be true, Amen. and let the word of the Lord declare what you need to do, Amen. what I need to be do, Amen. or what I need to do to be saved. Amen. You Amen. and I, I might be more foolish than you. I might be ridiculously Let's be fools together. Fools together. That's wonderful. Yeah. Nope. I have no problem in giving you company in that. But in regard, coming to the points, though, yeah. even if we assume, even if we agree on the assumptions you have, which I don't agree, but let's say even if we agree, yeah. you still haven't given positive evidence for the non-existence so far. What you are really saying is, oh. There is no evidence. In other words, you are you are you are saying there is no positive evidence for the existence. You're not giving positive evidence for the non-existence. Those are very different things. 
very very different things well, once you give your what your explanation is then for why well that's a different like story this. that's a different story the first thing we need to establish is you haven't got a reason to assert your conclusion that is very important for us to agree on I, 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 as a quick interjection, I resolutely disagree with that statement. I believe that I have provided evidence, clearly just headlines, but I know. You, you disagree, you, you don't believe that they are valid. So for me to understand but your judgment of that, I would have to understand my why reasoning. you believe Jesus pre-existed. No, no, no. For me, for you to understand, uh, for you to understand my judgment on your comments, mm -hmm. all that you need to understand is my feedback on your three arguments. Whether I have arguments or not is an entirely different story. Whether Joshua, one second. Joshua, one second. One second, please. I'm making a very simple point. Okay, yeah? Okay. yeah. We have never met before. I think I briefly saw your video a while ago. I didn't watch all, the, all of it, but I briefly browsed through and I thought, oh, well, hopefully I'll run into him sometime. Outside of that, I don't know who you are. And likewise, you may not know who I am. Yeah? But the point, in, in other words, in other words, whether I know my stuff, whether I have thought through, whether I have a case is irrelevant, irrelevant in regards to whether the decisions you have taken in your life so far are valid or not. So far, do you see what I'm saying? I could be a nobody in your life, which I am, which, which is who I am. I am a nobody in your life. Only today we are meeting, we are getting to know a little bit and so on. So right now we are a little bit of a somebody to each other. Prior to that, I was a nobody. My belief, my reasoning or uh, my valid reasoning or invalid reasoning would have been irrelevant to the validity of the doctrinal position that you have taken. With me on that? Your doctrinal position should have been based on your arguments. Nothing to do with whether I have arguments or not. So, so for example, I say I don't believe Jesus pre-existed because I don't believe that the Hebrew scriptures talk about Jesus. Yes. And yeah. So, so do you, you see? But you don't believe that's valid, which is fine. You say my argument is not valid. I didn't say your argument is not valid. Yeah. What I said was ma much more nuanced. I said yeah. you haven't given. I think you, you look at these problems through such a precise lens, which is very important. Oh, it is, but it's also we also have to have the context for. But yeah, I'm interested. Let me let me, let me put it this way, Josh. I, all that I'm saying is very simple. Yeah. Presenting evidence, positive evidence. Yeah, but, but, but let Jesus me finish. Then, sir, can I one, one sec? If, if Jesus. If you suspend your disbelief for a second, and Jesus didn't pre-exist, there's not going to be me. There's going to be no evidence for me to present to you. Why not? Well, because I have presented the three bits. First of all, Jesus claims that he was a man. Second, the book of Hebrews and Romans say that Jesus didn't speak in the Old Testament. But, but if Jesus didn't pre-exist, then the New Testament doesn't need to address the problem. Who said so? But why would Jesus? Why would the New Testament need to address something that didn't happen? Joshua. Does that make sense? Joshua, no. But if, but if Joshua. We, if we suspend our disbelief. Joshua. So, uh, Joshua. Ali, when are you going to face the challenges in regards to Islam? Shut up. Shut up. Is that your best answer? Best response? So, at some stage, hopefully, you will man up. So, if there is a room, and if the room has no one in it, um, or let's say, let's say there is a there is a there is a shopping mall or some simple there is a room, and someone is saying, Joshua, you, Joshua, messed that room up. He entered in, he messed everything up, and he left the room. Now, please, mom, maybe your brother, mom, please get him to clean that. He caused the mess. But if you can, there are two things that you can speak about here. For example, if you can present an evidence to say, wait a second, I can show you CCTV evidence right the way through of the day in which your brother claims you messed mess the room up and show that you weren't even there. <laughs> you weren't even there on that day. That's positive evidence. I am able to show some evidence, CCTV, positive evidence for you not being there. Which is different from saying, ask my brother, 
the brother who is accusing, ask him to provide evidence that I was there. And I, I, I can challenge it, he simply can't. Oh, that is it, okay. Can record and whatever. One of those two, whichever is convenient for you. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, I am free, I'm not working this week, so depending sure. on your timing, sure. we could arrange your time. Sure. Um, what I'd be grateful for is maybe just a slightly, um, yeah, an articulation. I don't want you to spend a lot of time writing in terms of um, that uh, that particular point in terms of your your positive information. So, because I am, uh, yeah, so, you know, but, if Jesus, so for example. I'll Peter, come to that, I'll come to that. My point simply is, when you provide positive evidence for absence, that's, that's a case sealed. Yeah, but if something didn't happen. One second, let me finish. Yeah. You didn't mess up. But what if, what, if the, what if there isn't a messy room? So there's no CCV DC to show you the messy room because it never happens. Sure. Surely that's that's going to be an option. Joshua, Joshua, <laughs> Joshua. Let's say yeah. there is mess in the room. The question is, who did that? Who did that? Yeah. Ah, of course, I'm, I'm making it convenient yes, yes, for me to establish a point. <laughs> who did that? In relation to who did that, yeah. if you can give positive evidence for you not being there, that's a case sealed. It doesn't matter what your brother later says. He has to contradict your evidence for him to have any chance. But if you said, oh, uh, but I'm sure there is no evidence, you may still get away because there's no evidence because, you know, innocent until proven guilty. But in your brother's mind and in your mother's mind, it may not be clear whether you really did it or not. They just don't have evidence to understand whether you did it or not. You see what I'm saying? You are sticking to the second part, which is fine. If you suggest that that is the best that could have happened, that is fine. I don't think that is the best that could have happened. As a matter of fact, I think your starting assumptions are themselves wrong. That's fine. Sure. Yeah, sure. So when I when I establish the starting assumptions to be wrong, clearly your logic would follow. Your you points. Evidence, I would. That's I would. The point though, isn't it? I would. I would. Which I still haven't started doing, but I would. Because essentially, you know, in any debate, the challenge is this: there are two. You know, if there is only one point claiming, one person claiming, the other is just scrutinizing the claim, then it's simple. But, the but when the when is on you though, isn't it? You no. need to prove Jesus pre-existed. I don't have to prove that. No, who's the scripture that? doesn't. The scripture doesn't say Jesus pre-existed. In your view. But, but in your view, but, I'm saying that's wrong. But you can't show me a single verse, a single verse that says Jesus pre-existed. Challenge. You? That's the challenge, isn't challenge. it, brother? So I think the burden's on you. All I need to no, do. No, is burden. No, no. This has no implications <laughs> on who the burden is on. Okay, okay. This only implies whether I can prove. My, so far, yeah, yeah. I can establish unless you provide evidence. Evidence, I can establish at least that you can't prove your point then then it is a separate case to establish whether I can prove my point maybe I won't be able to also you see what I'm saying but, get, but that's a different thing yeah, but because of time and just a brief overview I mean I could have read Romans 1 I could have read Hebrews I could you have read whatever you want to read exactly that's the point you know the point is you then need to go through the examples and say why you believe that's not right or why you believe Jesus did pre exist you might go you know John 8 58 you might go to 1 Colossians 15 you might go to Philippians 2 all those arguments can be ripped apart essentially you know but the, um, you know I just present a few wave tops for you but clearly you're a very bright man and you you look at the, I think because of your experience and I don't know what your background is you look at problems in these particular discussions through a very precise lens that's very personal to you and you have something that you want to I don't mean that in a negative way I mean it's a really good way because you, you you know, you're fine-tuned on certain things and you will have an end state you will have your you will have an aim to get me to a point where you can then present what you believe and why you believe it should be true and um, uh, my challenge is very yeah. simple Joshua yeah. from what I can see you haven't asserted a case and therefore you should not be holding on to a particular of course we'll give you more time we'll give you more time in which case, if you if you if you don't have evidence to suggest that Jesus was not a pre in, in pre existence, all that you can say is I just don't know, and that may be fine. Uh, that may be fine. Doctrinally, if you have to know that, of course it should be there. And if it is not there, you can say I just don't know. 
you may say that i am completely fine with that uh, and but that is that is the best you could say and someone who is hearing your statement can say innocent until proven guilty therefore well unless someone you know establishes he needs to do something else he can you know do, uh, muddle along and do whatever he wants to do but i need to and my challenge is this through god's grace i would be able to present solid evidence that that be perfect cool then let, let's try do that then. yeah yeah absolutely i've got your card yeah i think i yeah no, your wife gave me your card yeah is it working city or not it died how can it die when we had full charge i think okay so yeah, no, i would like to know more about your beliefs absolutely you know because actually it's um not that you did this but if you gave me if you told me your beliefs and i just told you that i didn't think your arguments were very uh, very robust or very scriptural and stuff like this but i then didn't tell you why i thought that um that wouldn't and i know we, we had time and stuff like this so i would really love to better understand sure. your understanding of scripture what you think about the sun in terms of whether he was eternally the sun or not and why you believe he existed eternally or why he pre-existed why you believe he spoke in the hebrew bible which i imagine you do um and then we can we can we can unpick these points sure and, um, yeah, yeah. absolutely so in other words if i can't make my point of course then you can't conclude your doc you you can't you can't uh, uh as uh, you can't um, give your allegiance to the doctrinal position that i am suggesting also clearly i completely agree and that is why i have to do i have to um yeah let's do that through god's grace yeah, yeah. yeah but it was wonderful speaking yeah, to you today yeah, no, it was good. yeah yeah god's blessings and uh, please get in touch yeah we'll do and uh, i'll have a look at your youtube channel actually i didn't know sure. you had a youtube it's, channel it's 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 there all how, how ironic or not ironic i love the fact that you've got operation steven yeah but for me not for us to start a big a discussion but steven's description of moses engaging with the angel for me is perhaps one of the most powerful passages of scripture that convinces me that Jesus is not was not the angel of the Lord is just a martyr tour and then built it down um, but I don't wish that you've been very kind in the chat today so I'll have a look at your um, your website yeah and uh, yeah I mean once we hopefully I mean um, I mean the one thing I'm really happy about in our conversation is when I when we went through the first couple of points or whatever and when i said that they are not valid of the first one at least uh, you know in terms of you know using their declarations to of, of a, to 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 be of any use you agreed which is really fantastic you know because we are trying i mean i i slightly misunderstood i think what you My, wanted me to yeah, ask yeah yeah i can, that can happen that's all, that's that can happen but wonderful joshua yeah. so looking forward to through god's grace more conversation on this and hopefully that need to hear what you think hopefully hopefully exactly <laughs> hopefully uh hopefully we can come to a point of agreement yeah you never know never know yeah and uh, cool yeah, sounds good yeah cool uh, what do you do for, for a job just have interest or just gen general you don't need to give me the specifics i <laughs> i don't mind giving you specifics um i have actually shifted gears mm -hmm. just in the last month and right now i am setting things up to become an independent journalist um so essentially although i don't want to be a one man shop it's a startup it's a startup but uh, hopefully it grows a little bit more and so on yeah journalism prior to that software engineer yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. i'm engineering engine so i can i can i can get to the nuts and bolts of an argument and say no because for me for me in my profession things have to work oh, i agree As and things are zeros and ones yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. you know yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i can't do i can't deal with approximation what's your background then just in regards to your your walk of faith just out of interest oh um i come from i come, of course i come from india um my mom was a christian even before i was born my dad was a persecuting atheist oh okay and he was an atheist persecuting uh, levels of persecution changing a little bit up and down and so on for a long period of time and so at, at home it was speaker's corner in india back home but through god's grace my dad passed away only about a year and a half ago through god's grace he actually what faith was he was he no he said he was an atheist atheist yeah um although with a bit of a soft corner to the ancestral worship sort of idea um yeah that's that was my background i grew up 
yeah, where from essentially the Lord showed me dreams and visions and so on uh, at various points in time. Oh, so you believe in the gifts of the Spirit and stuff like that? Absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely, absolutely, nice absolutely. Nice. So uh, through God's grace, uh, step by step, I understood him to be, in, I, from a very young age, I understood, understood him to be God. This guy who is speaking to me, who my mom is introducing me to me at church and so on, this guy is real. And of course, he's not a regular human being. He is real from a non-human existence and therefore he is a, some kind of a superpower. In my view, God. So I understood him to be God from a very young age through very uh, well-defined um, uh, experiences I ran, ran into in my life. Well-defined, that is the key part. Wasn't uh, an approximate, what wasn't a, uh, wasn't all, I was uh, ill and God healed me. Very and precise the, events. Very like precise that. events. Um, and then yeah, I understood him to be a uh, savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And then I understood what it means to call him Lord, Commander in Chief. And um, essentially his deity, I believe, can be asserted in multiple different ways. Eternal existence is just one of them. And for eternal existence, I don't think we even need to get to the relationship between the Father and the Son. That's a, uh, that is only uh, some additional detail. But if he was eternally existence, if he was eternally existing, that immediately means he was uncreated. No one brought him into existence. He was non unreliant on anyone else, and which is the very definition of someone being God. <laughs> which is a very if he was, yeah. So um, yeah, and multiple other. Uh, and you guys go to a church here? We have a home fellowship. Based in our home, home fellowship. Uh, we, yeah, it's a, it's mainly people from India who fellowship with us. We have a few people who join with us um, in the UK also, you know, once in a while and that sort of stuff. So yeah, a few things like that going on. Uh, how about you? Are you based in London somewhere? Or? Yeah, just North London. North London, yeah. yeah you know, I, my mum had faith. My dad came to faith through her. Um, I grew up going. Were they Christians themselves, or? Uh, yeah, they are. They are yeah. now. I mean, my dad came to faith maybe ten years ago. No, but uh, were they Christians or are they Nazarenes? Your version? Oh uh, no, yeah. So my, my dad is now Nazarene. My mum is. Um, my mum is probably more Orthodox than her beliefs. You know, <coughs> it's a bit difficult to try and. She loves Jesus, you know. So for her, it doesn't. It's not a significant, a significant issue. You know, to most many people, church it's not. But I grew up going to a really good Baptist church, and I just fell in love with God's word. I used to read it all the time, and you know, for me, it was just so clear. Sadly, because I started reading the Bible as a teenager, almost daily. And, 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 um, sorry, yeah, sorry. And, no, no, it's fine. You know, from sorry. my perspective, um, you know, I thought Jesus and the Father are clearly two distinct individuals. But it was never really something we talked about. You know, I went to university. I was I then was filled with the Spirit when I was um, in 1994. You know, I started leading people to the Lord, seeing genuine miracles and words of knowledge. I started leading Alpha at university, and many people came to faith. But interestingly, I, I never believed with C.S. Lewis's narrative that Jesus is either mad, bad, or God. I just always thought there's another option there, my brother, which is the anointed one, who I do not believe. For. And um, yeah, I, was, I did a lot of outreach, a lot of ministry, and then. Um, uh, yeah, then some incidents occurred, and I kind of stepped back from my from my faith. I ended up joining the military. I've been doing that the last kind of 20 years, and about seven years ago, I decided to return back to my earlier calling. And as I have done, conscious of always being part of the Trinitarian churches, but never to believe Jesus was God Almighty. But always able to fellowship, to care for. It's very easy. To, you can still love in the name of Jesus, generally, um, and serve and support. I co-led a church um, for about a year and a half, a Church of England, CV Church. Being able to still preach, but just not focusing on the deity. Do you want to tell Nathan you know? to go home? Or no, no, we're, he's going with us. We're going together. And um, and then yeah, it was uh, two minutes. Yeah, and then it was um, yeah, just I was unaware that there was this whole thing about non-trinitarian Christians. I didn't even know it existed when I was a young man. Um, and then so we've just. Um, yeah, from there I just stepped out and actually said, because I do believe that it is a counterfeit Jesus, just as you believe, I believe in the counterfeit Jesus, but actually, and we both believe the truth is set us free, and so therefore there's utility in, in, in talking about what we believe the scriptures truly teach, so that, that's it.
and you don't, you don't, you don't, you're not in regards to scriptures. You're happy with the. Yeah, yeah, okay. Hello, brother. How are you doing? You're doing a great job. Thank you, thank you much. God's blessings. God's blessings. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, brother. Thank you. So, um, that's good, Joshua. I'm not, like I said, I only have, po of course, you come from a different place, but I only have a positive feelings in relation to our conversation purely because I say something sensible or you say, you articulate in a specific way so I can challenge. You don't, you know, and it's good. We agree and move on and so on. So, through God's grace, Joshua, I'm looking forward to uh, further you conversation. Baby to go and meet. Okay. That's right. And my father in law is waiting, and our brother is yeah, waiting there. A I mean. little bit of a rain and so on. Okay, see you later, Joshua. Please get in touch. Yeah, let's keep things going. God's blessings. Bye 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 bye.